anyone has trauma with a vegan or with like the extreme, um, you know, ideas and activists, like everybody has that. But when you take that away and you just entice them to the kitchen with the good smells and the good music and the fun party that is flavor on the plate, that's how they ask more questions. And that's how they lean in and want to know more about how they can do this in their own life. And that's exactly what I teach. I set the stage for this beautiful party and invite anyone who wants to come. You know, go ahead and introduce yourself. Talk a little bit about what you do. Awesome. I'm Chef Lauren D'Agostino and I plant seeds of change in open minds and empty bellies by showing people how approachable and unforgettable plant-based food can be. But I do this because there's so many misconceptions about plant-based food, healthy eating, healthy living. Isn't it going to be flavorless and boring? Won't it be hard? Won't it be expensive? None of those things are true. So I bring the party to life into people's taste buds in a couple different ways as a private plant-based chef. The first being really fun and can be casual or more kind of business focused, clean crafted wine tastings. That's a part of my business. It's a no brainer to add to my dinner parties, which I'll get to in just a second, but it's just a great way for people to gather, learn something new, be inspired by healthier choices and really just taste the difference. For really the main focus for me right now is the dinner party experience. So that looks like the gourmet plant-based chef's table restaurant coming into someone's home or business if it fits um, to have a multi-hour multi-course experience it's totally unforgettable perfect for friends families someone who's celebrating a vegan but doesn't know what to cook them or feels kind of rude to prepare a normal menu and then like the one separate thing for the vegan that's like maybe not even homemade. Um, so it just makes a great gift too for the person in your life who is vegan and committed to this lifestyle and wants to share it with you. The extension further of that is wellness retreat chefing. So I work with people who host weekend retreats or week-long retreats and who know that food is medicine. So people who are in the yoga space, meditation, energy healing, even business leadership, mindset coaching, any of that type of stuff. And then for the person who wants to live the good plant-based life, I offer coaching. I teach people the system and the strategy, not the specific for how they can add plant-based to their day-to-day -day life. It's crazy living in the 21st century, I get it. But you need a system and a strategy to make plant-based accessible in the craziness of life. And so what that looks like is some Chef Lauren on-demand coaching through a course I've created and then some accountability, some hand-holding. Change in the kitchen can be, for a lot of people, really daunting and overwhelming, but it doesn't have to be. So I work pe with people in the short term to teach them the skill they'll have for life. I don't really like rules and recipes usually are too structured. They're great to use as inspiration, but they are not totally black and white. They're completely subjective to whoever is cooking. There's a lot of variables. There's a lot that can go wrong, right? And so instead of teaching people to copycat any recipes that I might come up with, I teach instead the system and the strategy. So how can you think about making this dish, this meal, whether it's nachos, tacos, um, stir fry, pasta, hummus, power bowls and salads and salad dressings and all sorts of different things. How can you think about making that meal the most plant-based, the most colorful, the most flavorful, and the most accessible for where you're at now? So sometimes people take these things that I teach and they still might add animal protein. That's totally fine. I'm not gonna teach them how to do it, but if they do, I won't shame them either. They, they need to be wherever it is that they are so that they can keep moving forward. And, and the way that we do that too is by eating approachable food. I will never teach someone how to make this weird kind of food that's that's really uncomfortable and foreign. It's not just tofu and sprouts. I don't like meal plans. That was always a, a weird concept to think that far into the future when for me, cooking and eating is such a, a present in the moment thing. It's almost like a meditation. And that's really how you get more connected to your intuitive diet guru to understand how you need to feed your body in that moment, in that day, based on your activity level, your mood, the season, all of it. Sharing this with other people, everybody resonates with a different reason why. So it's kind of part of my job to find out what that reason is because someone who cares deeply about their health, they might care about the other things, but that might not be the driver for change for them. Similarly, someone you know, might really be connected to learning more about animal welfare or about the environment, or they consider themselves an environmentalist and never thought about the impact of the choices that they make on their plate. So 
I love learning about all of it, but the reason that I've stayed plant-based for so long is kind of like the fourth mystery reason um, to be plant-based and that's the food. Plain and simple, it's the food, it's the flavor, it's the fun um, and the flair too that I bring to it you know, at my own table and at the table that I share with others, but it's the flair that other people can bring as well. And I know that words mean a lot to you, right? Like I saw something that you posted online the other day where you were talking about, here's the reason why I don't say kill it uh, and why I prefer other things. Can you kind of expound on that a little bit? When you choose to, to use words that are more supportive and the same goes for anything, even if you're telling yourself, I'm a terrible cook, I don't have time to cook, I can't find healthy food anywhere. Of course, that's going to be true. So instead of saying killing it, you could maybe shift into something that's like a little better, like crushing it, right? Like we crush grapes to make awesome wine. Um, but you can also say she's owning her brilliance. She's stepping into her passion. He's he's owning his radiance or like, I mean, anything like however you can turn the language to be more supportive and abundant and positive, um, I think just goes to kind of like affect this this broader energy that that keeps the larger system in place of of the you know the idea of of speciesism and um, factory farming and like like all of that stuff. I mean, even something like kill two birds with one stone. Like, why would you want to do that? You've got a bird outside your window. Like, isn't it nice to listen to? But instead, you can feed two birds with one scone. There's all sorts of you know different ways that you can say those things, and it's kind of fun. Um, it's kind of fun to play with and to notice it. And then just to share that with other people, I've, I've kind of opened a lot of minds to just noticing that. And sometimes that's where you start. Talk to me a little bit about the cookbook. So the, the book is really just a expression of all of the things that I love to make and then celebrates the different essential oils that we can reach for when we're worried that plant-based food won't be flavorful. So it's part inspiration, part information, um, and just was really fun to put together. I learned a lot about the individual essential oils um, that don't always taste the way that the spice does, like cinnamon bark essential oil, for example, tastes like red hot candies, not like ground cinnamon. If I go vegan, how am I going to get my protein? Like I need my protein. I like to go to the gym. I like to build muscle. Like what do you say to that person? Yeah, that's one of my favorite things to hear um, because asking these questions means that they're like a little bit interested, right? So, so I tell them that when they ask about protein, it's certainly a valid question, but people don't start to ask about protein until they think about changing, right? So, so someone currently might not be getting all of the vitamins and minerals or the fiber that they need. Fiber is really the thing that we should be talking more about. Fiber is the broom and the vacuum and the mop of the human body. Protein is important, yes, but it's not the only thing. And it's not just protein in general, it's the vehicle with which the protein is delivered. So meat, for example, is like an 18 wheeler down the highway treading really heavily on our digestive system and on the environment for that matter. But Plant-based protein is like little smart cars, just kind of like cruising along, weighing very lightly on the whole system. And that's, for me, that that just was such such an important thing to consider. And even for the person who's, who's just thinking, gosh, there's no way I can totally eliminate meat right now, you don't have to. Take baby steps. I don't expect people to jump from where they are all the way to the end of their destination, right? You can't get to California by just snapping your fingers, nor should you expect to make it to living in your plant-based destination immediately, you know, the, the day you decide to make the change, you've got to take baby steps because that's where it's sustainable. That's where you let your body and your brain catch up to all of the good things that you're starting to feed it. And that's when you don't need willpower anymore. You know, and your body tells you what it wants to eat if we listen to it. And all the things that are making that hard to hear are things like animal-based protein, low vibrational foods, processed foods, extra salt, extra sugar, extra fat, all of that stuff keeps our intuitive diet guru kind of drowned out by all that noise. So if you don't think you'll ever be vegan, that's totally fine. Maybe you just soften into the idea of eating less meat or smaller portions of meat or just saving that meat-based meal for a special occasion. Maybe your uncle like cooks steak the, the way that you love most. So like save that for when he comes to town and grills for you. I don't know, or save it for like your favorite restaurant. You can't wait to go back and support. It doesn't have to be all day, every day. In fact, it shouldn't be even for the person who's still including it. So it doesn't sound like to me, you're a, a, a vegan sort of evangelist. Like everybody needs to do this. Everybody needs to live this lifestyle. It sounds to me more like, you know, 
if everybody would just eat 10% less meat, then we'd be in much better shape. Exactly. And the kind of cool thing that happens too, when people are kind of drawn into this lifestyle by this perspective, they're really surprised at what they notice. They're surprised how awesome they feel when they eat more plants, how much more energy they have, how much better their digestion is, their mental clarity, how their skin gets brighter. I mean, everything. Life is so much better with more plants in it. And then they get to choose and kind of dance with the right formula for them based on their bio individuality. They get to decide what will actually work for them. Would I love to see a totally vegan world? Of course, but I'm also incredibly practical and realistic. And I know that the way to inspire change is to help people believe that they can do it. And so the best way to do that is with flavor and just kind of this like all encompassing, very warm approach to plant-based. Let's talk about the wine for a second. Okay. Right. I was so blown away by what I learned about the wine industry, the way it's changed in the last couple of decades. Um, there's tons of extra chemicals and additives and all sorts of things hiding in your wine glass that don't need to be there, that shouldn't be there. They're not good for our bodies. They're not good for the planet and they're not good for the fellow people tending to the vineyards. So grapes are one of the most pesticide laden crops, right? They're always on the dirty dozen list. So imagine you have these little pesticide sponges that are totally soaked with nasty chemicals that that gets picked and turned into juice and turned into wine. You're drinking all of that. I don't want to drink that. I'm sure many people um, don't either. And that's the stuff that really makes you feel lousy. So as soon as I learned about this, I said, okay, I've got to be part of this. And as I share about myself as a chef and just what I believe in, it's exactly what this company's mission is as well. The, the label is called Scout and Cellar. It comes from Texas and we source grapes from all over the world. We ship wine right to people's doors. It's so easy. It's the best wine, honestly, I've ever had. I'm so spoiled. I can't drink anything else now. Um, and it's just so cool to know that you're supporting, you know, regenerative farming. You're supporting people who like, like me as a small business owner are just trying to, you know, make a better way for the future and, and leave the world a little bit better for future generations than it might currently be. So um, it's been totally fun. I love to share the wine with wine lovers, of course, or people who are into healthy living and haven't considered like I hadn't the potential dangers that might be hiding in their wine glass as they think, oh, it's great. I have, you know, red wine with my meal, but not if it's got all those gross things, they're kind of like undoing each other, the healthy choice on the plate and the unhealthy in the glass. And then I love to have fellow health crusaders with me on my team sharing this amazing wine with people. Um, it's been such a great addition to my portfolio as a chef. So always looking for others who are curious to have that as part of their um, arsenal as well. I got a wine lover on my team who is working her tail off and I'd love to reward her with something. So what do I do? Yeah, awesome. That's such a good question. So we ship wine direct to people's doors, like I said. So it's super easy to share with anyone. If you want to give them a gift, just like you do, um, someone can reach out to me and we can arrange that, whether it's simply a gift box, which those are around $59 to $69, I think, includes shipping. Um, we do ship to almost all states. And then um, you can also just order wine a la carte as little as one bottle or as much as 12 or 24, however much you want to you want to get. And then um, we do also have a wine club for people who struggle with making decisions like I do and who want wine just shipped on a schedule. Um, and it's super flexible, always free to join, free to cancel with a range of bottle quantity, range of variety. So all red, all white or a mix. And then you get to choose how often that shows up, either monthly, every other month or every three months. It's the most flexible plan ever. Talk about that misconception a little bit. I mean, is it really more money to eat the way that you eat or is it just a matter of making different choices? Yeah, it's totally just a matter of making different choices. And when you eat locally, and of course, then that means you're eating seasonally, not only is the food much more affordable, the farmers are practically throwing it to their customers because it's in such abundance, but you also get so much more flavor, so much more nutrients, and it feels really good to be keeping that money in your local economy. So check out your local farm stands this season. Be part of a CSA, Community Supported Agriculture. You get to invest in the farm at the beginning of their season and enjoy so many months of fresh, 
amazing vegetables, a lot of which you might not know what to do with, but that's the most fun. So many people are only kind of operating within this boring cycle of like four vegetables that they know that their family likes, but there's so many that we don't even know all of them. The other thing too, to remember is animal-based protein is expensive. And even if you find the stuff that's a bit more affordable, it's probably really crappy quality. So you get what you pay for. And I don't know about anyone else, but I would rather invest in good health now to make good health later on so I can keep doing all this awesome stuff than be sacrificing a lot of things in the short term and still be sacrificing in the long term. Like that's, that's not the game I want to play. I want to invest in good health for myself, the people who I know and love, and the, the world as a whole, it's totally a myth that it's that it's more expensive. I want to get her to talk to my husband because I can't get him to eat right. And like, so they're going to they're going to see this. And, and that's the kind of thoughts that they're going to have. And so how do people engage more with you? Yeah, a couple of things. They can definitely join me on social media. Chef Lauren D'Agostino is my handle. Um, I share all sorts of behind the scenes and tips and food for thought. Um, all kinds of fun stuff. And then my website is another place you can go to check out in greater detail, all of the different things that I've mentioned that I offer. And then um, I've got a couple free downloads too, an intuitive pantry shopping list and a quick guide for getting five or easy five ways to get uh, more plants on your plate by dinner tonight. And then that kind of segues into, um, you know, trying a free class that I have on my teachable school, which is called plant-based fundamentals. So they can learn how to build a better salad, including salad dressing, and just kind of try it out. See if you like my energy in the kitchen. See if I am inspiring in all of these, you know, in all of these different things that I can teach people. And then I also offer a completely free, no strings attached, how to go plant-based and stay there discovery call. A quick 20 or 30 minutes on the phone, people tell me where they are, what they're struggling with, and I just love to offer those little tiny baby steps that they can take right now to move forward on their plant-based path to help get that momentum going so that they can believe that this is something that they can do, right? It is overwhelming, I get it. I have a lot of things to share and a lot of passion behind it, um, but meeting people where they are is, is the best way to guide them on their path to get to wherever it is they decide their destination might be.